Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring you the retrospective for UFC Fight Night, Felder versus Hooker. We had a pretty decent night. We ended up at 58% accuracy. We went 2 out of 3 on the Patreon picks. We were in the money last night. We had an amazing time. Also, we made, just me personally, I made a extra on the Fury fight. I'm feeling good. Let's get into it. Here's the show. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do things a little bit different here. We'll talk about Hooker and Felder, and then I'll actually get into Tyson Fury, and then we'll finish up the rest of the card here, just because that Fury fight was so fun. Uh, So when we looked at that Felder-Hooker fight, you know, it was very tight going in, and it was tight throughout the entire contest. However, I personally felt while watching the fight that Felder actually did win. Now, he was outstruck, and Hooker did get that additional takedown. So when you look at the raw numbers, yes, Hooker won statistically. I won't argue that. However, Felder was doing a lot of damage deep into the fourth and fifth round, and this was kind of a John Jones versus uh, Reyes situation. You have Hooker, I think, do well the first uh, three rounds, and then Felder pick up the last two. And so if you go ahead and look at that, you know, we got kind of a reverse decision here where they gave it to Jones for finishing strong, and then they took it away from Felder for finishing strong. So just... Kind of interesting the way things play out in MMA. We ultimately got the fight right. He was the statistical favorite there, but I did think Felder uh, personally won. It was a really tight contest. Um, I'm actually surprised Felder did as well as he did. His, I, I want to say it was his right eye, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was swollen very, very badly. It was nearly shut. It looked like he was squinting out there for basically most of the fight. I mean, that thing swelled up very, very early on. And Hooker did take advantage of that in the middle rounds, but Felder just came back so hard. He had the heart of a champion. He really wanted to win, and he ended up going out on his shield in a way with the decision or split decision loss and a possible retirement in the ring. You know, we talked about his uh, his son or daughter. His child is four years old back at home, and this obviously takes a big chunk of his life out. And he also, uh, you know, has the commentary gigs. He has other means of making a living and being involved in the sport still that he holds so close to his heart. So I believe that he probably will walk away. He's 34 years of age, and I think it's okay to hang it up at this time for Felder. It's not that he can't do it. It's not that he couldn't fight at a high level. But I do think that he has opportunities outside of the cage where it might be worth exploring those. So uh, hats off to uh, Paul Felder in his career. You were a phenomenal guy to watch. Definitely an exciting fight to watch. And thank you for everything you've done for the sport and in the cage. And uh, moving on, I think, to Hooker. Uh, he did a call-out of Gaethje at the end. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't like that call-out. I think Gaethje sits really at the top of the pile and I only want to see KG do two things. I want to watch him fight Conor McGregor, decide who gets the title shot after this Khabib Tony thing maybe happens, or have Gaethje just straight up sit on the sideline and fight the winner of Tony versus Khabib. So either it goes through Conor and Gaethje first, or Gaethje gets that immediate title shot. I don't think Gaethje has to go down to face a guy like Hooker. Uh, also, I think Gaethje will put a hole in Hooker's head. I don't think that Hooker is capable of beating Justin Gaethje. He's not that bad of a man. Now, I don't mean bad like in the bad way. He's just not that much of a badass. So we'll see how things play out for that. But uh, good win for us and uh, just excellent uh, fight overall. And uh, then we're just talking here about the Fury fight just a little bit. So there's not much to really say. Wilder got clipped very early on. We saw a different kind of Tyson Fury. He was very aggressive, scored some early knockdowns, and I'm pretty sure broke the eardrum of Deontay Wilder. He had blood coming out of his ear. Uh, Even Dustin Poirier said this on uh, Twitter that he thought he had a busted eardrum. So I'm going to stick with that, uh, which was my initial thought of what happened to him. And I can't imagine his equilibrium was there after that. You know, I think that was a very good reason for his corner man or his cut man, rather, to throw in the towel at that point. He just couldn't find his legs, couldn't find his power. He was very hesitant to throw any shots. Wilder was. And he was just eating a lot of heavy, nasty shots from Fury. He got knocked around the ring, and it did not look like the Deontay Wilder that showed up in their last fight. Now, granted, Fury did fight him differently, 
brought the fight to him, and I think that maybe threw off Wilder a little bit due to his lack of experience overall in boxing. But uh, it's not over for Wilder. He will be back, assuming his injuries aren't too bad. And now we just have to look forward to Fury versus Joshua. I'm going to say it here. If Joshua doesn't fight Fury next, if he fights some other can, some other bum, it's a disgrace to boxing, and we got to put the best fights together. This thing was phenomenal. It was a record breaker, $16 million gate. I don't know what the pay-per-views are going to be, but it's going to be freaking huge. And Fury versus Joshua will be even bigger. Put that somewhere that can support it. Put it in Wembley Stadium. Put it in Cowboys Stadium. Hell, put it in the new Raiders Stadium in Vegas. Put this thing in a venue. Get some. Uh, that's amazing. Put the most competent judges in the world in it, and let's see who the baddest heavyweight is in the world. Can Wilder? I'm sorry, not Wilder. Can Fury? Be, you know, maintain that lineal title. Can Joshua become the lineal champion? We got to find out. I don't want any ducking. I don't want any cans thrown at these guys. I want a just a showdown to decide who the best heavyweight boxer is in the world on this planet. And it's good for boxing overall. It's it's really lit a fire under the ass of the sport uh, for having three of the best heavyweights on the planet. It's really opened things up. And I think some other guys like your Lomachenkos of the world will continue to get a little bit more traction and showcase some of the smaller weight classes. So as the heavyweight division goes, as goes boxing. And right now it's on fire. So I hope they can keep that going and set up that Fury versus Joshua title fight. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Jimmy Crute defeats Michael Olenstruck, another one that we got correct. Olenstruck uh, just got taken down. Crute was just a takedown machine. Eight takedowns over basically three and a half minutes. Uh, he would not let Olenstruck get to his feet. And uh, he basically sat the gas tank, took the power away, and lands a Kimura uh, on the ground and is able to get Olenstruck to tap out. This is a fight that we did call correct, and I was more than happy to make this call. And the next one, Zhijian Yang defeats Karolina Kovalkiewicz. This one is a one-sided affair. If there could have been a towel thrown in at any point during a fight tonight, it definitely should have been this one. Kovalkiewicz got outstruck 3-1. to one. She got taken down uh, five times. She did put in one kind of submission attempt for a heel hook, but there wasn't really much in it. It was a desperation play, you could tell. And Jan just looked all the superior fighter to Kovalkiewicz. I think she's done. I don't want to see her get beat up anymore. I liked Carolina when she was basically on the top of this game, going toe to toe with Joanna, and it has been such a steady, you know, downhill decline that I do not want to see her fight again. I don't need to watch a fighter that I really liked and respected get their ass kicked. It's just not something I like to see. So um, I hope that she does hang it up or switches organizations or does something. Switches camps even. If she just switched camps, I I would honestly be okay with watching her fight again. But as things stand, you got to hang it up. I'm sorry. Um, and, you know, obviously that's her decision. This is my opinion. But it's it's what I'd like to see. Anyways, we got that one correct. Next one we got correct as well. Marcos Rogerio de Lima defeats Ben Sosoli in the Combat Wombat. Amazing fight name, by the way, but uh, not amazing in his style. He ended up getting knocked out. Rogerio uh, clipped him really early on, about 90 seconds in, puts him out, and that's really all she wrote. Uh, Rogerio was a little funny, though. He said, this is my division when he was on the microphone. And I mean, yeah, you beat a debuting fighter. I mean, that's cool and all. Uh, let's see how you do as you climb the ladder. Uh, what's next for... Rogerio, I'm not sure, but we'll we'll see how things play out for him. And then another one we got correct as well. Brad Riddell defeats Magomed Mustafayev. And in this one, it was really close, but I think Riddell got the win. Mustafayev scored eight takedowns, but he didn't really do anything with them. You could tell that he was just clinching and just getting takedowns to stop the striking assault of Riddell. And uh, Riddell ends up getting a split decision. I thought it should have been unanimous, but it ended up being split. I understand the takedowns. I understand the fact that Riddell, um, you know, only got 10 additional strikes, but they were such heavy strikes. The knockdowns uh, you could see against Mustafayev, I think that they counted very heavily against uh, Mustafayev, and uh, he ended up, uh, you know, not being company a win for that reason. If it hadn't been for the knockdowns, I think you probably could have given this Mustafayev and would have been wrong, but that K1 championship kickboxing background of Riddell just came through here for us, and we picked up a great win. So, 
We actually had a really good uh, top of the card, uh, but we did run into a couple of issues as things uh, went on here. So like I said, we ended up 58%, two out of three on Patreon. Uh, but we had a little bit of a rough patch. It's about to hit us. Uh, so Zubara took off, uh, defeats Kevin Aguiar, uh, knocks him out three and a half minutes in. Uh, not too much to say here. Aguiar was just outclassed and outstruck. It's not how I started playing out, but it's what happened. The next one, we had a debuting bout in Jalen Turner to take on Josh Kalabau. Jalen Turner is so big, so long. The debuting information is so short and so weak uh, that we have that uh, I'm not too upset about this one. Uh, but he got knocked out in the second round. Uh, Kalabau can only fire off 12 strikes. Turner was boxing his face off. Uh, he went for three submission attempts. He outstruck him basically 4-1. to one. It, was a, uh, it was a real one-sided affair. And uh, hats off to Jalen Turner. I uh, just hope you continue to make weight for your size at lightweight. The dude is huge for 155 pounds. In the next one, we had Jake Matthews defeat Emil Meek. We did get this one correct. Matthews basically was able to get it done by doing something with his takedowns. Four takedowns over the fight, 33 strikes to 50 from Emil Meek. Also, there was a good knockdown by Matthews on Meek. And, uh, you know, I think this was a very solid call. I'm glad to see it was unanimous, and Jake Matthews put in a spectacular performance. In the following one, we did get this one wrong. This was one of our Patreon fights that we did get wrong on the night. The ones that we did get correct, by the way, were going to be James Crew and Brad Riddell. Also, I had Maki Patola, but that fight was canceled, so that just is what it is. Uh, so... Like I said, two out of three correct on Patreon. We didn't get Callum Porter. I was right on the narrative, though. So Callum Porter, early takedown, scores mount. Song gets back up, scores the knockout at that point. I didn't think Potter could hang with him on the feet. I thought he could hang with him just enough to score the takedowns, which he did early on. The narrative worked. He scores mount and just can't execute the game plan. So right on the narrative, wrong on the execution. Uh, just kind of tough, you know, when I predict it that way and it doesn't work out entirely. Uh, so uh, we were so close, but uh, so far at the same time. Callum Porter picks up an L, and so do we. Uh, and then the last three here, Kai Kara France defeats Tyson Nam. I was very confident about this one. I love Kai Kara France. Uh, he was able to survive the onslaught of Tyson Nam and do it uh, pretty handily, outstriking him 78 to 50. And then I called it. We always get these fights wrong. Angela Hill is defeated by Loma uh, Lukbunme, uh, the Muay Thai kickboxer. And uh, Angela Hill, you know, she was outstruck, but she still did more damage. She was bigger than Lukbunme. I think part of it played into the fact that uh, Lukbunme was an Adam Weight fighter. I think she was too small ultimately for Hill, despite her skill set, and Hill took advantage of that. Uh, she also uh, did score a good takedown that I thought she did good damage with, went for the submission attempt, and so it was a solid decision overall, but uh, I can never get the Angela Hill fights right. I called it out, and uh, so I'm just happy I called out that I got it wrong, I guess, in a sense. goes as a, a loss for the numbers uh, on the, uh, the actual metric, but goes as a win for my own personal picks, I guess you could say. And then the last one we got it right, I didn't know what to say about this one. It was Pashilla Casuera and Shannon Dobson. Casuera scores a knockout 40 seconds in. It was the fastest women's flyweight knockout. I mean, I wasn't impressed by either fighter coming in. It really could have went either way. I happened to pick Dobson, ended up being Casuera. Hey, I'm, I'm not upset about that one. If you bet on that one, uh, get on the Patreon picks. You're never going to see that one on there. And <laughs> please... Please get on the Patreon if you're betting on fights like that. Just just don't do it. Anyways, uh, so good fight overall. It's at 58%, 2 out of 3 on Patreon. Also, I did get the Fury fight right. I was happy about that one too. I know we didn't really broadcast that one too much since we're really just an MMA uh, podcast or really UFC podcast. Uh, but we, I did get that one too, and so I was happy uh, to get a you know, couple of bucks. I'm never, never too deep into the gambling game. When I say a couple of bucks, I literally mean just a couple of bucks. It might cost me more than gas, I think, to get to the sports book. But <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, so we had a really good night. I'm, I'm feeling excellent about it. Um, we have another really good matchup coming up. We have the vacated flyweight championship uh, up for grabs next week in Norfolk, Virginia. Benavides versus Devinson, or Joseph Benavides versus Devinson Figueredo. They're looking like a pretty good card. There's one other fight here I really like. Um, I always like watching Megan Anderson fight, so she's going to be taking on Norma Dumont. I think that's a debuting fight for Norma. And then we also have Ion Kudaleba versus Magomed Ankalev. And so that one will be very good. I am excited for that one. 
Other than that, though, I'm not really sure. There's not a whole lot out here. I might have to treat this like a bit of a debuting card. I'm not looking to go too deep on this one. I got to obviously crunch it and see how I feel. Um, but, uh, oh, also Luis Pena is on this one. So that one's actually one to look out for. Ooh, Luis Pena, Alex Munoz. You know what? That is a very good fight. I like that one a lot. So, uh, yeah, I like that one. All right, there's, there's a couple of sleepers on there. But uh, we'll get to ultimately see Benavides take on Figueroa. That'll be a really high output, exciting fight. But it's still just a flyweight championship. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we hopefully get to see Benavides finally, you know, get the title that I think he deserves. So I'm really looking forward to that main event and a couple other ones down on the card. And then that's going to take us into our next pay-per-view, Adesanya versus Romero. That one look is looking straight fire. I'm excited by that one right now. And I think that we have a great uh, several weeks of fights ahead of us. Things are looking amazing. We're rocking and rolling into this 2020. I'm feeling good about everything. We're probably going to come back, I think, with a whiskey review soon in March. Uh, your friend of the business, Kurt, is, uh, I think, going to bring something for us. We're talking about doing a kind of a co-review. You know, my wife will also be back two on something else we're talking about doing another hype cast for somebody who is back for one of those to talk about the ferguson Nemagomedov card a lot of good things on the way and uh yeah if you wish to get in touch with the show please write us at fighting spur podcast at gmail.com also we are on twitter at mma fight picks zero one uh, you also can get in touch with us on the facebook page the youtube comments you know where to get at us like subscribe tell your friends do all that fun stuff and get on the patreon if you are betting at all we've had some pretty good success and yeah so until i speak with you again next time happy fight picking